It's been great for our company. Our employee turnover is at an all-time low. So I think it's good. It's good for our shareholders. Uh, they've uh, enjoyed great returns. It's great for the employees. It's great for the customers. Uh, ultimately, the, the big idea here is that money is technology that allows us to transfer economic energy through time and space. And we're seeing and living through a digital transformation of money. Everybody wants to move assets at the speed of light, friction-free, 24-7, 365. MicroStrategy's Bitcoin strategy is just a way to invest in that. And the enthusiasm over Bitcoin is really billions of people on the planet that want to move their money faster and more frequently. Michael Saylor, the founder and executive chairman of business intelligence and enterprise software services firm MicroStrategy, is always actively trying to secure his place as a big Bitcoin bull and proud maximalist. With his adept knowledge of flowery metaphors, traditional investments, and the core fundamentals of the leading crypto asset, Saylor has proven over and over again that he loves Bitcoin and believes in the asset's long-term potential, despite last year's price action. Last week, MicroStrategy executives, along with Saylor, announced the firm's financial results for the fourth quarter of 2022. Fong Lei, who succeeded Saylor as chief executive, said the company achieved total revenue growth on a constant currency basis for Q4, as well as the full years in its cloud business. He added that in Q4, current subscription billings grew at a double-digit growth rate for the 11th consecutive quarter. Andrew Kang, the firm's chief financial officer, also discussed the progress made in the Bitcoin part of the business during the quarter. He said, I am pleased to report we again increased our Bitcoin holdings this past quarter to a total of 132,500 Bitcoin. Our corporate strategy and conviction in acquiring, holding, and growing our Bitcoin position for the long term remain unchanged. After the earnings call presentation, Saylor appeared on CNBC's Squawk Box to discuss the company's decision to stick with its Bitcoin strategy despite carrying cumulative impairment losses of $2.153 billion on its digital asset holdings since the acquisition. According to Saylor, despite the macroeconomic headwinds of the past year, the underlying technology and idea behind the Bitcoin network make the asset the ultimate digital transformation and revolution of money. During a CNBC interview, Saylor also addressed the issue of popular Bitcoin critics, like Charlie Munger, who recently published an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal urging the U.S. government to ban cryptocurrencies across the country. We will now take you to Saylor's CNBC interview as he discusses MicroStrategy's business model, new promising developments in the digital assets industry, and the Lightning Network. Please watch the video to the end, share it with others, and don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and drop your comments and observations in the comments section. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm, so we can continue to bring you these videos. Thanks and enjoy the video. It doesn't change our strategy. I mean, the losses are a function of the uh, indefinite and tangible accounting treatment. And of course, an auspicious development in the industry is that FASB's uh, taken a position that they're going to move toward fair value accounting. So eventually, uh, we'll be able to mark our uh, Bitcoin assets to market. We're enthusiastic about that. Uh, MicroStrategy is a way to invest in the digital transformation of money. And we're a gateway to the macro and the crypto economy, allowing investors to either go short, go long, or trade the volatility. So our strategy is to buy and hold Bitcoin. And the key for us is to be consistent, transparent, and responsible in pursuit of that strategy. And we're unique in that regard. We're always considering ways that we can take advantage of this multi-billion dollar asset. And as you know, there's volatility and there's some unique tax treatment. So in that case, we were able to uh, generate a like a $34 million tax loss and we were able to carry it back against taxable gains. You know, we look forward and, and from time to time we may see opportunities, but but we're fairly prudent and responsible in considering those things. We're seeing and living through a digital transformation of money. Everybody wants to move assets at the speed of light, friction-free, 24-7, 365. MicroStrategy's Bitcoin strategy is just a way to invest in that. And the enthusiasm over Bitcoin is really billions of people on the planet that want to move their money faster and more frequently. And they're, they're, uh, they're uh, chafing at the restrictions of the 20th century analog finance economy. The most exciting thing going on right now in the in the digital monetary world is Lightning. Lightning is a layer two open protocol for moving Bitcoin transactions in a split second for a fraction of a penny. In essence, Lightning is money over IP. 
And if you think about the world uh, as it changed after TCP IP and moving data over IP and then voice over IP, uh, Lightning promises to allow millions of companies uh, to provide transactions in real time with billions of consumers. MicroStrategy is actually developing MicroStrategy Lightning, our own enterprise Lightning offering. And uh, we're going to allow uh, CMOs uh, to offer lightning rewards or Bitcoin rewards like a universal frequent flyer program to hundreds of thousands or millions of their customers, all of their employees, all of their prospects at the speed of light off of a website. And uh, so we're very enthusiastic about that. And you're betting there's demand for this. Yeah, you know, like right now, uh, companies spend billions of dollars on digital marketing. They give it to Google, they give it to Facebook, and they spend that money on ads in order to get people to come to their website. What if you could just give the billions of dollars in money directly to your customers and your prospects and you cut out the advertising? It might create a much less toxic, much more constructive environment. To do it, you need micro payments. You need to be able to move money at the speed of light, friction free. You can't do it with uh, 20th century credit cards. They're too expensive. They're too slow. They're too kludgy. There's too much friction. So what Bitcoin offers is micro transactions that can fundamentally change the way you market, change the way you build your products. And of course, you know, if you live in Africa or South America and it's Saturday afternoon, you know, the banking system is not working for you. Right. Bitcoin and Lightning is, is a, a monetary system that works for the entire world and never gets turned off. Unlike Michael Saylor, many other top investors in the West are still strong Bitcoin critics. An example is Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's right-hand man and the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. Munger's recent opinion piece published in the Wall Street Journal urges the U.S. federal government to place a nationwide ban on cryptocurrencies like China did in 2021. The 99-year-old billionaire argued that the industry is nothing more than a giant gambling house with the odds almost fully tilted in favor of the house. The billionaire wrote, A cryptocurrency is not a currency, not a commodity, and not a security. Instead, it's a gambling contract with a nearly 100% edge for the house, entered into in a country where gambling contracts are traditionally regulated only by states that compete in laxity. Obviously, the U.S. should now enact a new federal law that prevents this from happening. In his CNBC interview, Saylor reacted to Munger's obvious disdain for the cryptocurrency industry. He also discussed his outlook for the digital asset industry in 2023, following last year's collapses. Well, his criticisms of crypto aren't totally off. There are 10,000 crypto tokens which are gambling, and I sympathize with them on that matter. But uh, Charlie and the other critics, they're members of the Western elite, and they're continually prodded for an opinion on Bitcoin, and they haven't had the time to study it. If, uh, if he was a business leader in South America or Africa or Asia, and he spent 100 hours studying the problem, he would be more bullish on Bitcoin than I am. Uh, Lebanon, Argentina, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Venezuela, they all illustrate the plight of the common man, and there's no solution better than Bitcoin. So I, I, I really think that you know the Western elites, they haven't had the time to study it. But I've never really met someone with an incentive living in the rest of the world that spent some time to think about it that wasn't enthusiastic about Bitcoin. You know, the crypto meltdown was, uh, it, it's painful in the short term, but it's necessary over the long term for the industry to grow up. Uh, this industry uh, has some good ideas, uh, like uh, digital currencies and assets moving at the speed of light uh, that are unstoppable and a digital commodity that can't be debased. And it also has a lot of entrepreneurs that implemented those good ideas in an irresponsible fashion. What it needs is adult supervision. It needs the Goldman Sachs and the Morgan Stanleys and the Black Rocks to come in the industry. It needs, it needs clear guidelines from Congress. It needs clear rules of the road from the SEC. This, uh, the crypto meltdown has punctuated uh, the problem, has educated everybody on, on it. But also, it's, it's underscored the idea that it's time for the world to provide a constructive, uh, transparent framework for digital assets so that we can move the financial system out of the 20th century into the 21st century. Undoubtedly, Bitcoin and other top digital assets are capable of helping us achieve that transition from 20th century finance, on which the world still operates a 21st century finance. The underlying technology is available and strong, and there are lots of brilliant minds and upright individuals building in the industry. Yet there's still a lot of distrust concerning the industry. 
But this can only mean the traditional financial industry senses the threat to its monopoly, and it's only a matter of time before everyone buys, uses, and trades cryptocurrencies. What are your thoughts on Michael Saylor's interview? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. If you are yet to do so, also ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Thanks for watching.